Good evening. So I just finished Who They Was by Gabriel Kreitze. I think you say his last name. I wanted to come in and talk about it because I really, really enjoyed this book. It's on the long list for the Booker Prize. This is his debut. I have my cup of tea in my BFG mug. And I also made chocolate fudge cake this morning. So I've also got a slice of that. Yeah. I'm really happy this got on the long list. I think for a debut, um, this really, really deserves to be on the list. It's told in the present tense, and you follow the character Gabriel Craigsey while he's living in a block of flats in South Kilburn in London. So the novel is talking about gang culture, and it's set mostly in 2006. I think it follows the character for about four years. The writing is really urgent and vivid and unsparing. It was quite unsentimental, which I think really worked. Um, the book is also very violent. Um, as well as being like a gang member and a drug dealer, he's also a university student, which is really what sets up a really interesting dynamic in the book. So he's studying English literature at... I think it's Queen's Mary University, which is like University of London. Like that is a really well-renowned university. You get the sense that the character, even though he's from a really disadvantaged background, he's very gifted and there's a constant war in the book between this harsh gang life and the kind of middle class establishment that is like the literary world. As he's at university, that really comes to loggerheads because he's like, do I want to live like the other gang members? Because most of them don't end up very well. Or do I want to pursue this degree? And he doesn't really have any other comparison to see himself in that world. You really get the sense that the role art can play in people's lives can be life changing. So I really loved that about the book. He's also from a Polish family. So his parents in it are, his dad is like a cartoonist, which I think in real life his dad is a cartoonist as well. And his mother is, she does paintings. So he's from like an artistic background anyway. A lot of the time in immigrant families, there is pressure on the children to do really, really well. The parents seem like really, really great parents and they don't seem like annoying parents. For a 320 um, page novel, I thought the pacing was really good. There wasn't any point in the book when I was reading it when I thought, oh, you know, this could have been cut out. Everything in this book was working, so I loved that. I found the writing really immersive. It starts with the word and, and it also ends on the word and. That might seem like really like wanky and literary and pretentious, but because you get so used to the narrator's voice, it seems really just true to that life where any day you could get shot or knifed and you never know what's coming. In the final year of his degree, you are like, please finish this degree. Like, please don't let the gang life ruin this for you. I really like the role education played in the novel. Education was always kind of parental. But parental in the same way that his parents are parental, in like a kind way, but never really judgmental or rejecting. Education was always generous and encouraging. So I thought that was brilliant. I do want to talk about the form of the novel. So this is autofiction. Like autofiction as a genre, it's not like a semi-autobiographical novel where it's kind of autobiographical, but everything's been changed for the most part. With autofiction, the line blurs a little bit and it can be a little bit difficult to see where the real life ends and the fiction begins. And I thought, as a piece of autofiction, this kind of really deserves to be a cult classic, I think. Like... I'll be disappointed if this doesn't end up on the shortlist. As the author is someone who is from, you know, he, he has actually been in this lifestyle. Like, a lot of the things that happened, happened to him. Like, he was, you know, selling drugs. He was killing people, I guess. 
I thought it was kind of heartwarming to think that someone who has lived a really dangerous life and is writing such personal material has the faith in fiction to put that much at stake. It's amazing that he wrote the book and was really serious and sincere in his portrayal of this lifestyle. I do think that he manages to put all this biographical stuff in, but he always remembers that it is a piece of fiction, which is what autofiction does. The chapters aren't um, numbered, but they do each have their own title. And I thought that always helped to make you remember that what you are reading is a piece of fiction, like it is something that has been crafted and sculpted. Um, I read an interview with him from Vice magazine, and I'll link that below because it's a really good interview. If you do want to read this and you're not sure how you're going to differentiate the author from the book, I think that interview um, will be really good at helping you be like, the Gabriel Craxi in real life is different from the Gabriel Craxi in this book. The last couple of chapters of the book are more reflective and they focused on this main part about when he got jumped by these gang members when he was like 13 and they held a knife to him when he was 13 and there was actually nothing he could do because he's just a kid. And that was really the moment when he decided that he isn't going to be a victim and that he would rather pursue this gang life rather than do something like where he's like his brother, where he just focuses on the violin. But anytime he's walking home from school, people could hold a knife to him. By being a gang member, he kind of gives himself more freedom at that point in his life. The writing is kind of stream of consciousness and how immersive it is. And it does use slang. I would say like 95% of the syntax is like normal English. Let me read you a little bit of it. After the seminar, I go and link Gotti at Mile End Tube Station. And he says, Snoops, come, we roll Will's Den. I reckon we might be able to set up a move or something. I say, I'm on whatever. On the platform, he leans close to me and says, Brother, I got the strap tucked, you know. I say, swear down. Swear down, he says. I got two boxers on and two tracksuit bottoms. I'm like, I was going to say, fam, there's no way anyone can tell you're holding anything. And he says, the real thing is I can't sit down properly because it'll look like my dick's hard. And then he starts laughing. I mean, obviously, in my accent, that prose kind of probably sounds quite ridiculous. But um, when you read it, you really get into the flow of the language. In the novel, he is known as Gabriel, but he's also known as... Snoops. So a lot of the characters are called names like Bugs Bunny and things like that. It does focus on like the masculine experience of gang culture. So it is more about toxic masculinity than, um, you know, a more balanced exploration of what life is like in gangs for men versus what life is like in gangs with women. But it does shed some light on like the women in these men's lives. But it is quite fleeting in that perspective. Yeah, I don't want to spoil any more about it. I don't think you could read this book and not come away with it with strong feelings about the systems in place in the UK that keep these kind of gang cultures alive. Um, and there also is like a bit about gentrification in there as well. So um, yeah, read this book. It's so, so good. If you have read it, let me know what you thought. And yeah, Okay, bye.